Y'all didn't think I was going to leave my PowerShell fam hanging out to dry on the Unify stuff, did you? Come on now. Alright, in the last video, we explored the Unify API using Python. And one of the things that differentiated Unify from the other vendors out there like Cisco and Juniper is that when you log into the controller, rather than getting a token back, we actually get a cookie back. And that has to be handled with sessions. And it goes without saying that PowerShell can handle sessions too, therefore it can handle the cookie. So what I want to show you is how to do that in PowerShell, again, using the invoke rest method commandlet. But I also want to take it a step further and show you how you can actually explore the Unify REST API. Let's go. All right, as always, this code is available on GitHub and we're doing essentially the exact same thing that we just did in Python, but now in PowerShell. So rather than kind of reiterating all the steps, let's just kind of dive right into it and look at what we got. We have headers where we are accepting an application of JSON response, but because we're using PowerShell core version seven, we've also got the content type parameter specified here, which is gonna use the application JSON header. So content type is saying we're sending a JSON body and accept is saying we're accepting a JSON response. Now we are going to be posting a username and password to the login URL, which is going to be specified here. In fact, let me clear the screen, scroll up just a hair. There we go, it was missing from the top. Yeah, we're posting to the API login URL. You'll change the code to have your own fully qualified domain name or an IP address there. <laughs> now this is where it starts to differentiate because we are using a session now to grab and hold the cookie that's coming back. So what we're doing in PowerShell is we're using the session variable parameter and we're just gonna give that session variable a name S. So later when we need to interact with a session, we'll use the session variable S. Just like all the other PowerShell variables that we're using here that are denoted with a dollar sign, you can see right here later down the road, we're gonna say use the web session S that was declared right here. So. Recapping, we're gonna be posting to the URI method right there at post. We're posting a username and a password. We're sending JSON and we're accepting JSON. We're going to be skipping the certificate check because I have a self-signed certificate. And uh, we're creating a variable called S that's gonna hold all of our session information. So later down the road, when we go to get a list of the sites, we're just going to say, hey, use this web session so that it knows to use the cookie that we've already provided. Now we're going to be changing the URL here. We're going to be using a method of get. Again, content type and headers are going to be using JSON, skipping the, cer the certificate check. Then once we have the site, we need to get the site name. And the site name is a unique code. It's going to be something bizarre like OM39SW capital V, something like that. The site name isn't what you named it. That's the site description. And in this case, I have a site description of Doc's home. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the site data that comes back from this site's request. And I'm going to say, hey, where the object has a description of Knox home, select the site name. And that's going to be an object that comes back with the site name. So in the very next path where I want to get all the devices in that site, I'm going to be specifying go to the API URL with the site, grab the site name from this name variable here on line 31, go to the stats section, and grab all the devices. Then down here, we'll be able to parse out all the devices in JSON because JSON gives us a pretty response. Ready to see an action? All right, let's do it. Let's launch PowerShell Core version seven. All right, there we go. PowerShell version seven. All righty, let's get going. All right, for my own security purposes, I've added in the IP address, the username and the password. I'm gonna paste it in here. We're gonna obfuscate the output and then I'm gonna clear the screen. But you can see that it will post and the login will succeed. So I'll just press enter. There we go, logged in. Now I'm gonna clear the screen. All right, and we can move on to the next commands. All right, next on the list was going to be getting the list of sites. So let me go ahead and just paste this information in right here. There we go, the list of sites are now stored in a variable called sites. 
And now I can move on and grab the site name and then get a list of devices that came from that site. So let me just copy this info here after I change the fully qualified domain name. Press enter. And there is all my site information coming back to me with all of my devices. So now you're thinking, okay, how can I get started with the API? How can I dig more into the Unify API? And here's the thing, there is documentation online. Here's the link. It's not that robust a documentation. And to be honest, they do have a REST API, but it's not documented either. What's really going on under the hood is, let me pull up a browser and I'll show you. I'm logged into my Unify network and check this out. If I actually bring up in Chrome and I go to inspect, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to network traffic and I'm just gonna confirm that I am recording traffic right now. Watch what happens when I click on something like the settings button. All right, so now it goes to settings. Look at this URL right there. There is API, their site, there's the site name, here's the REST API, and now it's saying check out the WLAN configuration. If we actually give that a click and you go to preview, you can actually see the preview data that came in here. You can find things like what's the VLAN. You can actually get the pre-share key from this information. And the more you click around, the more you're going to find. See, like now we can check out like radius profile information and see what the REST API endpoint was there. So when you've got radius profile selected, you can now look at the preview of what body was sent in that request. And then you can replicate that in your own code. So feel free to explore the actual REST API calls that your front end GUI is making to the back end of the controller. And that's how you can dig into more Unify programmability. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. I'll see you in the next one.